Hi, this is Mike back with another Python tutorial for you. And this time we're going to continue on with the different uh, types of data that you can uh, manipulate using Python. And we're going to go through the three main kind of uh, storage classes or types of data that you can you can store things in. We're going to look at lists, then tuples, and then finally dicts. And we're going to just have a look at the various different uh, differences between those and discuss why you would possibly want to use one before another. So the first thing we're going to look at is the list. Now a list is basically um, a container that will take various different data types um, in a list. So how, what do we mean by this? Well, let's make a list and let's call it some kind of random name like, I don't know, um, a list. And we'll call it, and we'll say equals, and we use the square brackets to indicate that this is the list. Now inside of that list we can put things like strings, so uh, a string, we can put integers, we can put floats, um, we can also put um, classes or any other type of data inside of this. Now the beauty of that is, is that we can then have a list of these things that we can contain the data in. Now later when we uh, discuss doing things like loops we'll look at why that's important to have things in lists um, but just to briefly kind of give you some kind of reasoning behind all of this. It's good to have a list because you can then go through that list one at a time doing a loop in your logic um, and for everything that's in that list you can then perform a specific action and that's why lists and dicts and that sort of thing are useful because they then make data available so it can be looped over and you can do a kind of a rinse and repeat process on each individual item in there. Um, more on that later in the series. So we've got a list, we've got various different types of data in there. With a list you can then um, index into it like you did with the strings in the previous uh, tutorials so list uh, index number zero is the first one in the list and then the last one in the list will be uh, number two because there are three in the list and obviously indexes start from zero not one so uh, if we have three items in a list then zero will be the first item one will be the second item because we, um, we're dealing with a programming language, everything starts from zero onwards instead of one, two, and three, like we would do in our normal natural human number systems. So uh, indexing two into this list will actually give you that 2.4 value here because that's zero, one, two. So press enter in there, we get 2.4. Now the feature of a list is that it's actually editable, so the items that are in there can be changed. So for instance if we go list item number two, or rather list item number three really, uh, if we change that to four point or 3.4 rather, our list then contains the new value in the end. If we were to change um, item number one and change that to um, ham, our list then becomes a different value in that position. So lists contain things, but lists can also be editable and change. So again with the the whole indexing thing you can then take out stuff one at a time you can assign it to a val a, a, a variable so um my list item can be that and then my list item contains that value that we've just pulled out of the list index 
um, we can also um, pull out a couple of items at the same time um, we can go um, my list items equals a list and in the same way as we did with um, our strings we can pull out a few different items at a time so if you remember in our strings we we start we just started with the first um, item that we wanted and then we put in the ending item so my list items will give us items one through to two because of this indexing that we've done so my list items should now be ham but if we did three it gives us that so we've kind of gone give us items um, from one here through to three and obviously three is the end of the list so it gives us one two and then tries to give us three but finds nothing at the end so we can actually pull out those two because it's between one and three so it's important to, important to note that when you're dealing with lists, the index, uh, this indexing scheme actually um, indicates the number past the actual last one in the list you want to pull out. And that's true of strings, of course. If you've got a string that's 10 characters long and you want to pull out the first five, you would say one through to six, and that would give you the first, oh, sorry, zero through to six and that will give you the first ones right so lists um, we've got my list items and we've got a list um, we can add lists together so uh, we can add a list to my list items and that would give you that so you can add them together um, we can also multiply a list so let's say my list items and in the same way as we did um, with our string you can multiply a list so if we say my list items times three well we've got my list items as that so if we do times three we should see the list has been elongated three times with uh, three duplicates of the list items okay so that's lists the next thing we're going to look at is tuples now tuples are very much like lists in that you can do the same kind of indexing and uh, additions or multiplications of them so you can add tuples and list and and I and um, multiply them in the same ways we've just discussed here but there's one small difference so say we've got a uh, a tuple oops we would declare it using these alternative um, braces or brackets rather and we can put um, strings in there we can put floats in there we can put integers in there as we said lists are uh, editable tuples however are not so what do we mean mean by that well in the same way as we did our list um, and we picked an item in there and then we said it could be uh, another number and then a list would then reflect the change with a tuple or a tuple we have these values but say we want to change that middle value um, we would have index number one for that one if we try to say that that was actually going to be 44.3 we get the error type error tuple object does not support item assignment now 
that's different from our list. The reason for that is that tuples are what we call immutable, which means that they can't be written to. Once you've created a list, uh, sorry, a tuple, once you've created a, a list of items inside your tuple, then you can't change them. Now, if you're not want, wanting to change the actual items that are in a tuple, um, this gives you an ad advantage. The advantage is that Python uses tuples much more quickly than it does with lists because it acts under the assumption that a tuple will never change in its contents. And because of that, it doesn't do certain checks. It doesn't have to do um, integrity checks or it doesn't have to mess around and say, have any of the items in this tuple changed? So when you loop through them using for loops later on, they actually turn out to be much faster to process for Python. Now, that's um, all very fine and well, but when you find out that you've got a list of 10,000 different items, if it's in a tuple, you're pretty much cutting down the amount of time it's going to take you to process all of those items in that tuple. Uh, and in comparison to had you put those in a list, that's going to vastly improve the performance of your programs. So it's important to know that later on. Um, the best rule of thumb, obviously, is to try and build something using a list to start with. And if it works, then you can look at ways of trying to port it over and use tuples instead to improve the performance of your programming. So finally, we're going to take a look now at Python dictionaries, or dicts for short. Um, now a dictionary is a kind of a hash table or if you've used some other programming language you might know them as a map um, and it basically allows you to create um, a list or an array of values but then be able to index into that list using words so in the past we used obviously a number to index into our list um, we did that with our tuples also, which you can do. Um, but with um, some situations, it would be nice to just be able to find certain keywords that are contained in a list. So um, f for perhaps we can start with a small uh, example. Um, so let's say addict. By the way, this this very these variable names are being given you here with the a underscore. They're not uh, any kind of convention. They're just something I made up for the tutorial. You can pretty much name these variables whatever you like. That's it's up to you. But for the purposes of this tutorial, that's what I've been doing. Now to make a dictionary, um, we start with a curly brace and a closing curly brace. And we can create dicts in two ways. Now the first way is this way. You start off by creating an empty dict. So a dict goes that. But then we can then use the square brackets and create um, some kind of text-based key. So let's say name, for instance, equals and then we'll set that to um, a string and then a dict now contains a variable with a key in there so if we want to then get that value back out again we basically use the actual uh, square brackets with the key in there so we can create the keys on the fly like this and then later we can pull that back out using the key now um, what else we can do is we can probably add in um, an age and we'll say um, uh, 21 because <laughs> Everyone's 21, clearly. So then from there we have the dict, which says age 21, 
name Mike. Now, another way we could have created that is to do it the opposite way around. We could say in another dict equals, and we can use this kind of format of how to create a dict. So we can do that by uh, basically starting with um, name, colon, uh, Mike Hibbert this time, so we can tell the difference in the data. Then we separate that key value pair. So name being the key, Mike Hibbert being the value that we've assigned to that key. Then we can make another key value pair age uh, 21 <clears throat> and then um, gender male and then we close it off with a curly brace press enter and another dict now equals that and again, obviously, we can uh, we can index into there and find out what the values are by doing this. Age 21, name Mike Hibbert, and the uh, gender, like this. So you can see there that dicts are actually really good for making um, easily accessible um, pieces of data structures within your programs so if you're wanting to um, create something that's uh, more readable and say, uh, say you are managing um, some some person's private details inside your system it's far more readable to have a dictionary where you can key in and ask for the age the name or the gender or something like that than it would be to treat that as a list and then rely solely on remembering which number the column was for the name so um, what else can we do with that you can pull out the keys and just the keys on its own so for instance with our or another dict you have uh, the keys gender age and name if we want to just pull out what they are we use the keys method so Previously, we discussed how everything inside of Python is an object, and that means that this list not only is a section section of data, it has some methods that will allow us to um, manipulate that data or access certain parts of it. So in the case of a dict, we have this keys method, which will go into the list structure, or sorry, the dict structure, and pull out only these first values, and so if we do that, we can then pull out the keys and to access the values, guess what? We use the values method and that gives us all of that information too. So later we'll demonstrate how it's possible to use um, loops and to pull out these keys and use those keys to actually index into a dict and pull out values and manipulate the structures using for loops and you'll see later on that that's a really useful tool to be able to do when you're manipulating large amounts of data. Okay, so that's the end of this tutorial. Uh, I hope that you found that uh, educational and informative and if you did then please click the like button and if you want to know more about Python and see more in this series then uh, click the subscribe button and we'll send you a notification as soon as there's a new one available. Thanks for watching.